Welcome back everybody. My name is Dr. Carl Baird and today I'll be discussing five causes of lower back pain that have nothing to do with your lower back. So a few things to keep in mind before we get started. While the title of the video is causes of lower back pain, a more accurate term would be contributors to lower back pain because a lot of this back pain that we experience as we get older, there's not one specific cause, but instead there are a lot of contributors that lead to more impact on the structures of your lower back, which over time cause this lower back pain. So while we're going through our list and you're thinking to yourself, you might have one of these things causing your lower back pain, or you might have all five, you might have two or three, you might, there's multiple contributors that we need to consider, and there's not usually just one specific cause. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is why it's so important that we understand this, because if you're somebody that's gone the traditional route of treatment for lower back pain, you've probably been put on pills, suggested uh, injections, maybe they've even suggested surgery, um, or maybe you're somebody that's gone more conventional where, again, you just kind of get these endless massages, endless chiropractic visits, all which temporary temporarily relieve the back pain, but it always seems to come back. Usually as you get older, it starts to get worse or more frequent. And you're wondering to yourself, like, why the heck does this keep happening to me? And it's because they're not addressing these underlying contributors that are leading to more impact on your spine. So if you're serious about solving lower back pain, keeping active and maintaining your lifestyle as you get older, it's important that you address the underlying contributors to your lower back pain, which we'll discuss in this video. Let's so get started. So before we discuss the five specific causes of lower back pain, I wanted to take a quick step back and take a broader view of the cause of lower back pain in adults as they get older. So this is the type of back pain that just comes on gradually. It tends to come and go. There's not one clear specific incident like a fall down the stairs or a car crash that you can point to and say, that's why I have my low back pain. And again, a lot of people just attribute it to, well, I'm getting older. So what's happening? Well, what is happening is you're having too much impact on your joints over too long a period of time. And so when you're young and healthy, this usually isn't a problem. You recover quicker. But as you get older, those smaller impacts start to compound until a structure fails, whether it's a disc, whether it's a joint, whether it's a ligament. And that's where we start to experience pain. So when we're looking to solve lower back pain specifically, our goal is to limit impact on the joints. That's what we need our treatments to do. If we just take pills, if we just do chiropractic adjustments or massage, we get that temporary pain relief. But the minute we go back to our daily activity, that impact on the joints is still there. And so it's just a matter of time before it comes back. So how do we limit impact on the joints? There's three things that we need to touch on, and that is gonna be strength, which is again, just how strong you are, your muscles protecting your joints, mobility, so how much range of motion do you have at your joints, and movement patterns. So that's how you coordinate certain movements to per perform tasks throughout your day. So we'll get into the five specific causes of lower back pain next, but I just wanted to show you the overall goal and then how we accomplish that with strength, mobility, and movement patterns. So with that being said, let's get into the first cause of lower back pain. One of the most important contributors to lower back pain that has nothing to do with your lower back is weakness in your glutes. So your glutes, again, are just your butt or hip muscles. And these are really important for setting the foundation of your spine. And so if you don't have strong glutes, which a lot of people don't because in our society, we tend to sit a lot, which means our glutes and our hamstrings uh, often aren't needing to be used and they tend to get weaker. Um, that's going to lead to a lot more impact on your discs and on the joints of your spine because you don't have those big, strong muscles providing the stability. Instead, you're relying on the more passive structures like your disc and your joints. And again, not a big deal if you just do that a day. But as years and years pile up, weakness in your glutes will be a primary contributor to lower back pain. Another common contributor to lower back pain in adults as they get older is a weak core. So this again falls under the strength category of how we're limiting impact on our joints. And remember, your core isn't just your abs. It's all the muscles that surround your spine, who one of the primary jobs is to protect your spine so that you want a strong enough core to absorb a lot of the impact of your daily life so that your muscles can handle it and less force, less impact 
goes through the more passive structures of your spine, like your discs or your joints or your ligaments, because if your core is too weak, it's those repetitive impacts that are going to add up over time and cause lower back pain. So if you're somebody experiencing lower back pain, it's important that we work on building a stronger core. Another common contributor to lower back pain that has nothing to do with your lower back is tightness in your hips. So you can see now we're focusing on how a lack of mobility or a lack of range of motion of certain joints can lead to more impact on your joints. So in the case of your hips, if you have really tight hips, what can happen when you're doing certain movements, whether it's in your exercise routine or throughout your day, if you can't get that full range of motion, your body's actually very smart and it will compensate. And a lot of times when it comes to tightness in the hips, it compensates at your lower back. So if you're trying to sink down deep into a squat, but you don't have that range of motion in your hips, what'll happen is your pelvis will rock backwards, your spine will flex, and that'll lead to more impact at your spine. And again, relatively small, you're not going to notice any pain at the time, but the more years that go by with that movement compensation, the more impact that goes through your spine, that eventually it's going to get to a point where you're going to experience pain. Another common contributor to lower back pain that has nothing to do with your lower back is tightness in your ankle. So again, another lack of range of motion or lack of mobility that causes more impact on your spine. I love this one because it's one that not a lot of people think about, but tightness in your ankles can lead to more impact on the structures of your spine in a couple ways. Both directly, if you don't have adequate motion in your, in your ankle, what can happen when you're walking, instead of smoothly absorbing the ground reactive forces, you're more, slapping the ground and that's going to lead to more impact up your leg into your spine which again over time can cause lower back pain and also it can lead to more lower back pain indirectly similar to tight hips where it can lead to certain movement compensations that cause you to put more impact on your spine which over time will lead to pain so if you're having lower back pain it is important to take a look at how much range of motion you have at your ankles and the fifth contributor to lower back pain that has nothing to do with your lower back, we're getting into the movement pattern aspect of what we need to correct to limit impact on our joints. And when I say movement pattern, what I'm referring to is how we coordinate movements to do specific tasks. And in specifically relating to your lower back pain, how you bend forward is very important. You need to learn to, in parentheses here, I wrote hip hinge so that you can bend forward while maintaining a neutral spine, engaging the hamstrings and your core so that you can lift things off the ground without putting too much impact on your spine. And what you find in a lot of people with back pain is that they just round their spine over and over and over. And what I like to compare the spine to, the best analogy I've heard is it's like a coat hanger, a wire coat hanger. And so it has the ability to bend, but if you bend it too much, eventually it just kind of loses its strength and it deforms and it can snap. And that's a dramatic, your lower back's not gonna snap, but it's the same idea where your spine does have the ability to bend, but if you do that too much or you add a heavy weight to that, it's going to cause a lot of impact on your spine, which over time will lead to back pain. So if you're having lower back pain, it's really important that you learn how to hip hinge or bend forward so that you can maintain that neutral spine as you're emptying the dishwasher, as you're doing the dishes, just moving about your day with minimal impact on your joints. So there you have it. That's five causes of lower back pain that have nothing to do with your lower back. Just a reminder of why it's so important that you keep these in mind, because the traditional approach to treating pain by treating it with an endless amount of chiropractic adjustments or massages or pills or injections, they all provide temporary relief. But if you don't get to the underlying cause, which is limiting impact on your joints, eventually that pain is going to come back. And as you get older, if you don't correct these things, it's going to be harder and harder to keep active and maintain your lifestyle as you get older. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my name is Dr. Carl Baird. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm here to help. Thank you so much. Hey guys, it's Dr. Carl Baird here, and I wanted to thank you for watching our previous video and supporting our channel. Now, if you're somebody who's looking to build strength, 
to solve joint pain, keep active, and maintain your lifestyle as you get older, be sure to subscribe to our channel to watch all of our new videos. You won't find it anywhere else.